I love, it's called Opportunity Report. I mean, it feels like after the past (laughs) two years, there should have been another danger report, which is like, the world's ending. Uh, (laughs) But it's over. (laughs) You're doing this Opportunity Report. And I, I, because I think there's a lot of people that feel like the world's really struggling and, and, or the industry's struggling, but there's a lot of people that actually feel there's a tremendous amount of opportunity. So what, why now, I guess, what, what was the reasoning behind that? You talk about it privately. We talk about it publicly. This is the Real Estate Insiders Unfiltered Podcast. Welcome again to the Real Estate Insiders Unfiltered Podcast. I'm your host, Dwiggy Dwiggins, which is very fitting for this particular <laughs> pod. My co-host, Mr. Uh, Mr. Robinson here. Yes, sir. Tell us about uh, Jack Miller, the president and CEO of T360 and this incredible thing that we're announcing today. Yes, yes. Uh, and his nickname is Amber Jack, which... Uh... Apparently. <laughs> <laughs> which he dropped you'll hear us. about when you're in there <laughs> yeah the opportunity report just dropped from the crew at t360 jack came by to unpack that with us and talk about it uh dug really deep on i mean it's a dense report with tons of information uh the highlights from the conversation for me were the value proposition the talking about the client relationship and the consumer relationship looked at the agent the broker level and the industry level so it covered the gambit of whatever role you might have in this amazing industry of ours he shared some insights and uh i love I asked him and he shared with us what he saw as the biggest opportunity for the future of residential real estate in the next 18 months. So great conversation, great report. You're going to dig it. Put it in your ears. Jack, welcome back to the podcast. Uh, This is an exciting episode. First of all, I feel like I should be calling myself Dwiggy the whole time. Thanks to uh, you and your, your partner. There's, there's that weirdness, which I'm sure is going to come out at some point Uh, during the show. The best Uh, ever. Also, um, we are uh, just right after you announcing the Opportunity Report, which we're going to go a deep dive into today. I know Keith and I are excited to go through that. We've uh, got our hands on it, have been reading it as fast as possible as well. Um, that being said, just for anybody who doesn't ironically know you, which would be very weird, just a little quick. Not possible. Not possible, but just you know who you are real quick, your position, uh, and, and then let's get into some questions. we got a lot of stuff to cover with this report today. So, yeah, it's great. I'm Jack Miller. I'm the president and CEO of T360. Uh, I have worked with uh, Stefan Swanepoel for the last little over a decade now in, uh, you know, in this consulting professional services company. We do a lot of management and advisory work and research for the industry. Uh, We publish two books a year. We're going to publish three this year, actually four this year. Uh, So um, we're deep in the kind of research and advisory angle for the industry. I personally have uh, been part of a national franchise, uh, run an independent local brokerage, sold real estate, kind of done done a lot of different roles in the industry through my career, and uh, really just just love this industry. I came from tech. All my friends thought I was crazy for leaving the tech industry to go <laughs> work professionally in the real estate industry. I think, I think that's a common <laughs> thing. Like, How the heck did you get there? Well, yeah. it, you know, it's a great industry with a lot of really interesting, somewhat crazy people in it, and. Yeah. Uh, Super entrepreneurial. Um, I think of this industry as like the Mongol hordes. You know, we're just uh, fierce and, you know, a lot, lot going on. We just kind of run around and do a bunch of stuff. And there's always some something interesting happening in this industry, especially the last last few years have been maybe a little too interesting. I don't know. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. yeah. A little does, bit. That mean, uh, does that mean we have to call you a con? So is that like you're like sure, Jack instead great. of Genghis Khan, it's Jack Miller Khan? I like yeah. it. Yeah. 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 I'm changing uh, you my phone right now. <laughs> yeah. J- great. Uh, so Jack is uh, also a dear friend uh, and one of the smartest people in our business. Uh, Super I'm genius. saying that is, you know, he's to see, he see a lot of different things. Um, and for Keith's my, my humor on this. Also, <laughs> when he spoke at one of our events recently, he threw the F-bomb three times on stage. It was and I never even got mine in. He said it before even I did. It was the greatest yeah. thing ever to watch. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, my alter ego. that's my alter ego, Amber Jack. Yeah, you come to every once in a while, and uh, you know, had had some things. Well, you know, it was just a great crowd. Yeah. I, I was totally. feeling, yeah, feeling the passion, feeling the passion, yeah. the passion no, for no. the what, our topic at the time. If so. people work with Keith and I, it's it's they're a little bit of crazy themselves. So you can you can go a little more free reign. All right. Well, not to talk about that. So uh, obviously, um, we're excited. I think the industry is super excited. Certainly, the press is all is all over this as well. 
Um, you guys uh, created this new opportunity report. Um, I, I know we'll cover this a little bit because there's no way it wouldn't, but this is 10 years after the danger report. So I get the time right on that. So I guess let's just go dive into it. What is it? Talk to us about it and, and we'll hear from you on it. I know Keith and I have a lot of questions to follow up with it as well. So. Yeah. Yeah. So um, great setup. So it's the opportunity report is coming 10 years after the danger report, but I hesitate to call it a sequel because it really is coming. It's coming from a little bit of a different place. The danger report was commissioned by the National Association of Realtors as a risk analysis to the, of the residential industry. And so, you know, my partner, Stefan, led that project and interviewed, you know, 50, 60 different leaders in the industry, plus surveys, plus a lot of focus groups. We, we did a lot of work to put that report together. And uh, we had proposed doing an update to the danger report about five years ago, but then COVID happened and all this kind of stuff went on. <laughs> yeah. So um, with all of the changes that have just happened with the court case settlement, the other lawsuits are in play, the changes to practice, the economic conditions, all of those things, we felt it was really important to uh, issue a new report uh, and also to give it a little bit of a different angle. Uh, whereas the danger report was a risk analysis and uh, in, in doing so, it's like, what are the threats to the industry? This is a, Hey, what are we, what's the guidance that we want to provide to the industry for the next five to 10 years about what are the opportunities? What are the directions that the industry uh, should move in? And we replicated the process for the danger report. We went out and interviewed um, the, about 50 top leaders in the industry and then combined that with the data and intelligence we've got in our consulting practice to really synthesize, not necessarily, I don't call it T360s, you know, full, and it's not us. It is, this This is what some of the smartest people in the industry think right. about what's going on right now and what opportunities they see in the market right now and what the industry should be pursuing in order to maintain a healthy real estate uh, industry, a healthy residential brokerage market, healthy climate for agents, good for consumers, good for all of that. So that's the that's the uh, the essence of it is, you know, what, what can we take as guidance from the leadership of the industry and really distill it into a into a working document for us? Jack, can you unpack a little bit the who, um, you know, did you go just brokerage owner operators? Did you go, did you talk to any, like, I don't know, mortgage professionals? How, how wide, how deep did you go in the who? Yeah, that's a great question. We really looked at the leadership within the residential brokerage industry, but that isn't mm -hmm. just brokers. So we talked to brokerage leaders. We talked to franchise leaders. We talked to MLS and association leadership. Uh, we talked to several leaders that operate more of what I think of as in the media space. We also talked to people in some of the other um, spaces that are adjacent to real estate or that have connectivity with real estate. Mm -hmm. uh, certainly like we, we interviewed the chief executive officer of, of Arello, which deals with you know associations broadly right. across the, the industry. And so uh, so it really was to capture you know people that have both the really the in-depth knowledge of what's happening in the residential brokerage industry and the perspective, meaning they're, they're at a, a company that has a, a, a national footprint, a large right. enough uh, perspective to provide uh, that was valuable. Uh, so that that's where that's where the core of it came from. And then, you know, obviously the consulting work we do and that sure. you know, we have about three to four hundred clients a year that we work with that bring in a lot of intelligence into us as a consulting organization that we were able to use and use that to inform the report. Why? I'm um, just curious. Why? Why now? And I'm just going to piggyback on that. I, I just kind of a comment. I love. It's called opportunity report. I mean, it feels like after the past <laughs> yeah. two years, there should have been another danger report, which is like the world's yeah. ending. Uh, but <laughs> right. it's over. You're doing this opportunity report, and I, I, because I think there's a lot of people that feel like the world's really struggling, and and or the industry's struggling. But there's a lot of people that actually feel there's a tremendous amount of opportunity. So what? Why now? I guess what what was the reasoning behind yeah. that? Well, really, really, it is for it is for that exact reason that okay. you know when we looked at this moment in time is an opportunity because of the challenges. And I think though I think you know I know both of you know I know many of the other guests on this podcast have talked about the opportunity that happens in periods of big change, and this is one of those periods. This is a mm -hmm. this is a time in our industry that we will refer back to again and again and again. Remember when this happened and. Right. 
that company and that company and that organization made a big move because of the opportunity it created. And that's where we want to focus people because we can, we can cry and whine about how things were better in the past and we can try to hold on to them. But that is a very weak approach to right. anything, yeah. right? That's just the past is the past is the past. What happened is what happened. We can be mad at the attorneys. We can be mad at the situation. We can be, we can be mad at our own agents. We can be <laughs> mad at the state at the NAR. We can be mad at everybody or we can go, how do I take this moment and make value out of it for my company or my organization what do i and what do i need to do in order to make that happen and that's really the the purpose of the opportunity report is to get people thinking about how to move forward how to just accept and let's let's move forward with what we need to do so that that's mm -hmm. the and that's the why now is we 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 talked about doing it next year but then we pulled the entire project forward and decided just to do it and publish it this year before the NAR next conference so before we go to the report and then go through it, because Keith and I were reading lots of stuff in there, um, I did want to, I well, because let me back into this. The report does start with a little bit historical on the danger report as well. Um, and I couldn't help but notice that, you know, how accurate you guys were on some of the predictions. Yeah. 10 years ago. I mean, you were, you were pretty accurate about all, it was 10 major predict, 10 or 12. I forget what it was now. 10. Um, 10. Yeah. And just give us like, just, can you do a quick overview just of, for like two minutes? Here's like sort of the summation of what we thought would happen just to kind of set it up. Because I, I think it's important for people to realize that, that, you know, the, that your group was really, really good at projecting the problems and then being correct. <laughs> well, it's, I mean, it's, actually, so now that I say that, I'm not happy that you were correct in some ways, but there, we'll, we'll talk well, about the opportunity in a minute. There's, yeah. Yeah. There's two parts to that. So what part one is to, to do the danger report and to do the opportunity report. We talked to people that we thought were really on the nose about what's happening. Mm -hmm. They're paying attention. Yeah. They're in the game. They're good strategic thinkers. They're high level people. You know, everybody that's listed in the back of the report, you're going to recognize their name and their organization, right? They're, they're, they're people of, of substance, right? And so we did the same thing with the danger report. We talked to people of substance for the danger report and, you know, then backed it up with additional research and surveys and all that kind of stuff. Sure. And so it's somewhat, it's kind of like, well, we talked to the smartest people in the industry and guess what? They were like mostly right <laughs> about what yeah. was happening. Right. Yeah. And, yeah. and it was synthesized by us. And where that was our job is to be that synthesis vehicle. And so, you know, people say, well, you were so accurate. And it was like, yeah, because the smart people that are really paying attention to what's going on had very reasonable conclusions that they drew from the situation. And so yeah. it's kind of it's 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 um, from our perspective, it's not surprising. But right. the number that like the we had uh, we fed it through chat GPT, which I understand all the youngers are calling chat nowadays. They're starting to just send oh, it to chat. They so dropped the GPT. Thing. Yeah. Analyze the report, our danger report, and uh, give us a score on every single item that we projected <laughs> or predicted as to its uh, as to whether or not it's happened or not. And the entire report scored 83%. We had some items that were 100%. Yeah. So but 83% as an overall report written, you know, 10 years ago now. Uh, it's pretty is pretty, is pretty darn good. Yeah, it it's is. pretty darn yeah. good, and probably the first B Jack's ever gotten in his life. <laughs> so hard, so hard. So hard. Uh, you just you nailed me there. I'm a I'm a magnet school kid. I'm just wrecked. Uh, you know? uh, <laughs> well, I, the reason I valedictorian. I mean, it's just terrible. So I, no. <laughs> I asked the question because I think it's a, I think it's a, so I was leading you like attorneys do. Um, and, the, and the reason I wanted to do that was because you guys did an incredibly good job in the industry, mm -hmm. the people you, you interviewed predicting where the future was going to go. So leading up to this new opportunity report, this is a good, this is an opportunity for the people <laughs> in the industry to listen, watch it, read it and implement it so that. 10 years from now, they made those right decisions. So I, I would encourage everyone who's yeah. reading this to take everything in and, and, and look at it and go, we really probably should pay attention to this. Cause I don't think most of the industry paid any attention to what they should have been doing with no. the danger report. It was mm -hmm. very disappointing. It's very disappointing. I mean, we had some of the ones we had the, you know, masses of marginal agents destroy reputation of the industry. That was one of the ones from the danger report. And I think we can argue that the reputation of the industry <laughs> has been really dramatically impacted by practices that come out of 
agents that aren't very well trained. And, and yeah. that's not all their fault. It's the industry's fault. The industry mm-hmm. should yeah. take action on that yeah. and yeah. you know raise the bar. We, you know, we talked about that, um, you know, agents may become less relevant. And now we have a lot of people that are like, hey, do I need an agent or not? Or do yeah. I, you know, that kind of thing. So, yeah, so these right. are ones that scored, you know, 85 or 90 percent accurate. Uh, or how about on- the uh, regulatory tsunami hits? Uh, you guys yeah, nailed that, that one. 100%. That, that one, that <laughs> one the, the chat said 100% <laughs> regulatory tsunami did, in fact, hit. Yes. Maybe it hit a couple of times. It, uh, right. might, it might hit again. We might have another, you know, another Hurricane Milton still coming, right, uh, for the industry. So, um, and God bless the people in Florida because you just get run over all the time of those things. But, yeah. uh, you know, it, it may it may be coming – there may be more of that on its way. So I it agree is- with, we'll, we'll link to the show notes for people who want to get uh, the opportunity report. I, I think what's, in, it was funny to read through it. Not funny, haha, but funny, interesting. Um, like you wouldn't have, you don't have to take action on everything that you see in the report, right? If, if, if someone looks at this opportunity report and thinks about it and takes a handful of things, two or three of these things, and really gets their company oriented around what they feel like are the key drivers out of everything that you've provided, you are absolutely positioning your company uh, Mm -hmm. with the right tailwinds, right? Strategic tailwinds to be successful. So uh, it's really almost a cheat code, right? If if you read through this and think about how to, ideas are easy, implementation's hard, execution's hard, right? And, but using this and finding a couple of them that, that really, you know, okay, my brokerage fits great for this. We can, we can absolutely implement this. This is something that's important to me. You can, you can reshape the next probably five years of your, of your brokerage operation if, if you do it right. Yeah. We, we think of this, the opportunity report as a grand strategy document. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So it's a grand strategy. It's, it's big. It's the whole, it's, it's the whole thing. Yeah. And again, the strategy for your company and your business uh, doesn't have, you're not trying to do everything. Like we're not yeah. trying, you, you're going to pick the areas where you say, these are parts of the strategy that because of the way my company structured, my business model, you know, the market I'm in, the particular opportunities that come my way that I can really lean into and uh, get on the front side of, and you can move in mind with, with all the pieces of it. But, um, but I think you're you're absolutely right about how to use it, Keith. It's like to and look you, at it as a grand strategy document to choose choose from. Absolutely, it's to choose your own adventure. Seventies kids, I know about those. Um, yeah. And then you also broke it out between sort of agent and broker, and then what I'll call you know industry, right? And which I also found really interesting because there were, weren't the same answers in both no. sections. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those are those are pretty different. So we looked at it from. If you're a practitioner, which is the majority of the people watching this are probably in some form, run a brokerage, sell mm-hmm. real estate, uh, do that. 100%. Yeah. So a lot of people in that. So we've said these are these are things that if you're in practice to be focused on. Right. Uh, and then there's a whole area where if you're in you know organized real estate, MLS association, or kind of the infrastructure of leadership of the industry to think about. And we did that on purpose because you're, you're really engaged in a different activity. You know, you're not transacting real estate, but you're thinking mm-hmm. about you know, hey, do I allow non-members to uh, subscribe to my MLS? You know, right. do I, do I, uh, what do I advocate, you know, what's my focus as a local association? Um, you know, I find myself butting heads with another local association. There's a way we can cooperate, work together better. You know, so it's, there's a whole set of things that for that group that they need to think about that are entirely different from what I think about everybody else that's in production and, and transacting. And that it's just different. We'll get into the specifics. So I want to ask you like, you know, some high level things and then they obviously can go get the report and, and obviously you should read it. But there's some areas where you had like clear positions that were described in the in, in the report, like uncoupled commissions and then others in the report like CCP where, you know, you had a split decision on it, obviously relevant to timing today with everybody's <laughs> on different yeah, yeah, camps. Yeah. Um, but like, talk to us about that a little bit. What was the- Yeah, and some of that, I want to kind of, break this into a few pieces. So okay. there's Good. there's what's in the report and the report is really intended to be our synthesis of what leaders in the industry told us and okay. said, these are the things that we told us. And then there's what I think of as like kind of T360s position or orientation towards certain things. Like, so we've, we've been very strategically have said, look, 
get on the front side of this decoupled commission thing. There's no reason you need to continue to share commissions. You can do, you, you just you like lean into that. We've been as a consultancy have, have very much taken a position on that fairly early on and said, look, mm -hmm. you know, you need to build up your buyer proposition, all the things you've been, you've been saying on this podcast and that James, I've heard you, you, you and I have talked about on stage many times. So there's certain areas where the consultancy has leaned into things. There's my personal opinion. I have my personal opinion about some things, but not everybody. So we have three layers of opinions. This document really <laughs> represents what, what, what did we hear when talking to the leadership? And there, we're right now, it's really interesting. We have these conversations right as the CCP stuff was really starting to unfold as being sure. like a, at least a, a temporary battleground of where do we draw the line over NAR's rules and uh, you know, what, and what are the implications of drawing those lines differently than they, than they have in the current policy. So that's one I can point at and say, well, that's that one. We did not hear a clear, like the signal was not clear yet because the leadership was still discussing and debating it. And I think at this point, what we tried to capture is like, hey, there's some pros and cons to this, and it's going to come back to what the industry decides to value and focus on is what will win, you know. And, that, and I think we're very much in that one. Whereas I think the, you know, the the compensation one, we feel most of the leaders we talked to there were like, yeah, just get over it. Like we just need to decouple and just move on because that's been that's sort of settled at this point. So there was much more clarity in in our interviews uh, at, at, on that topic. It's amazing how um, you're talking to high level people that get it, but like just still a majority of the industry hasn't gotten to some of these positions yet. Yeah. I don't even think people even realize that CCP is a discussion. And candidly, I was at a, I was doing a keynote the other day and some people don't even know what CCP is. Yeah. Yeah. In <laughs> fact, just in case someone who's listening doesn't, what is CCP, James? It's yeah. clear cooperation so, policy. Yeah. yeah. Policy <laughs> says you have to put you're the a, list you're in the yeah. No, I'm be, they, I promise you someone listening doesn't know. Yeah. Because yeah. they should know, but someone listening doesn't know. Well, so, I, you know how it is when you're transactional, you do what you're told. Yeah, if you're a broker, right. thing, you got to, yeah. you know, turn in your paperwork, put in the MLF, da, 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 you just do your thing. You don't know that's yeah. just your cooperation policy. You're right. like, that's what, right. that's what my broker told me to do. So I, yeah. I do, they, they say you have to do this to maintain whatever, and I just do it. Right. So there's Every a lot of agent people. has a do what my broker tells me policy, but they may or may not know CCP. Well, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Correct. They should. Correct. They should. Yeah, they, they should. should. They should. It, uh, it, hopefully, they they do, and they you know one, will learn one more. more yeah. One more question before we dive into the uh, sort of specifics, or your, you know anything you want to shine a spotlight on that that came out. But are the opportunities that are in the opportunity report are they all now opportunities, or is this another document that's sort of uh, you know this is what I'd be focused on in the next twelve months, thirty six months, five <laughs> years? Like how great, how were you thinking about that? That's a great question. And I, I would say um, because we, you know, when we interviewed more than 50 leaders for this report, I think each of them would answer that question a little bit differently, depending right. on their market, their focus there. So I, I almost say you have to, you have to read mm -hmm. this document through the lens of your role, you know, your specific opportunities, what's going on in your market. Now there's certain things where it's like the decoupling of the the compensation and, right. and all that, where it's, it's sort of like, that's a right now we've kind of, we're, already some would say we've already done that some would say we're still in process of doing it we're 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 in that just because of the timing of the august 17th um you know right change of policy but others i think it's you could go one by one and just say look um given my market situation um where we're seeing maybe you're seeing a lot of commission compression and that right. you need to do some design work around like, look, if we're seeing that, then we need to, we need to figure out how to move with it. Right. And how to, how to do that. There's others that I feel like are by their very nature, just, just are going to take a little bit. They're going to take a little bit of time. Mm -hmm. Like we, we have, uh, you know, digitizing the real estate transaction using AI. Right. And we've been talking about this for years now, oh, yeah, two or maybe three years yeah. ago. Uh, just with just around the AI topic said, look, every piece of technology in this industry is going to get torn down to the studs and rebuilt with AI as a capability. Right. Every, everything. It's all mm -hmm. it's happening in every market, not just real estate. Every tool, like all, every, every yeah. tool, everybody yeah. goes, it, it's sort of like, well, what happens if we build it now with AI? And so they're all that's happening. And that is going to take, you know, four or five years. And it's going to impact yeah. some areas first and some areas second, just based on the maturity of tools and things like that. So there's some that are going to be a theme for four right. or five six years. There's some that are going to be a little bit more of an event where it's mm -hmm. like, oh, this whole commission compensation change, maybe even the way you present and talk about buyer services like that's those are 
those are right in your windshield right now. You know, like right. those, are, those are right there right now. But then there's a lot of these other ones that I think, and like the, we have one on mergers where, mm-hmm. you know, do you timing? Do you, yeah. Timing. Yeah. You may be in yeah. a market where it's now, or you yeah. may be like, Oh, well maybe it's, maybe it's middle of next year when everybody's finally been beaten down and is ready to talk, doing a deal. So. And one other lens that applies to the report as well is the individual reading it, right? If, if yeah. you have, if you are an early adopter of AI and you've been thinking about it deeply for, cause it's been around for, you know, longer than a decade, right? It's been around for a long time. Yeah. If you are deep into that space, that might move up for you and your organization. If you, you know, if you're worried or think very, feel very strongly that AI is the end of the world, you might lean away from that one inside your organization. So I think there's the reader's <laughs> lens too, right? What are our strengths? As a company, what are our weaknesses? What are we set up to execute on in a really effective way uh, as you're reading through it too? You were saying that and I was thinking Elon Musk launches a rocket, catches a rocket with chopsticks and then launches cyber robots at the same time. I was like, it's a lot, Elon, to handle, by the way, in one week. Like, Give us a little more time, a little more space uh, on all that. Yeah, exactly. I can't get my phone to sync to the max. Like, whoa. Yeah. <laughs> um, Jack, take us in, like, yeah. take, take Let's us in. What do we give us some, give us some specifics that we can have to kind of tease everybody into it. Cause they obviously need to go read it. So, but give yeah, us so your high about, level. Yeah. Let's talk about practice first. Um, you know, practice everything right now in the report talking about practice is really, really comes down to value proposition and presentation of that in a consumer relationship. And so mm-hmm. if you look at okay. that, there's several different of the major themes in the first section for practitioners with, you know, decoupling the co- compensation, establishing best practices for buyer services. We wrote about this one because it's like we could be in a situation where people kind of lose the thread on the value of buyer mm-hmm. representation. Mm-hmm. And that is candidly terrifying yeah. because it's a lawsuit risk. It, you know, it's going to make your, you know, insurance is going to go way up. Yep. So it's something yep. where, People are saying, well, maybe I don't need a buyer's agent. We need to reinforce the value of it and how good it is for the consumer and how good it is for mm-hmm. the entire transaction and reducing risk and creating a, a good outcome because that's a that's a real problem. If you have a lot of people unrepresented or moving into a dual agency status in places where they would normally have representation, there's just that's a it, it's a risk. So, but it's also an opportunity for those that are really good and like, hey, we do a great job of this. Well, now's the time. Now's the time to show up with that. And that that kind of so there's a lot of pieces around the consumer, how we handle a consumer, how we rebuild our credibility with the consumer and the value of the services. I believe so much in the value of what buyers agents do. I was a buyer's agent for like six transactions and then said, forget it. This is really ridiculously hard work. <laughs> Get people to go through this. And I moved over to the listing side and then mm-hmm. moved and then mm-hmm. moved like mm-hmm. really moved into managing and doing all of our leads and recruiting and stuff like that. But the the buyer but the buyer's agent does so they much work. work. Hard. They, they work they hard. They work so hard. And, sure. and yeah. so many of them I would say if you primarily work with buyers, uh, just know that you have tremendous value. And your Massive. clients may not tell you that but you should know you have tremendous value to them in their safety of doing the transaction and not making a mistake and, you know, getting things done period. Like there's so many, so many people just wouldn't make it through the transaction. So if yeah, you have any, value, sure. your services are worth what you charge for them. And maybe, yeah. maybe you should charge more, you know, for yeah. some of you, they're very good at this. So I think that it's a, they, if you look at the practitioner section, you know, those are some of the major, major themes and that ties in our fourth one is elevating the role, elevating like, hey, let's really talk about this being a professionalized type of role where we think of ourselves at a, at a higher level. And that's always been a struggle in this. Right. But now if we're going to do it anytime. Now's the time. Uh, I think there's some that are more kind of for follow more into the brokers camp where it's like, you know, doing these investments in technology, like bringing AI in, um, designing new uh, commission models and new uh, or new compensation models or new ways of, I think those are probably going to be driven more by brokerages or teams that are very mm-hmm. savvy sure. to that. They're going to say, let's come up with a new way of where maybe we res- we we uh, respect the way that we engage with the consumer in a way that allows us to change the financial, the way that it works financially. And my favorite example of those is like, oh, well, you know, if if a, if a customer brings you uh, a, a, like this is a home I want to buy, can I just pay you to help me get it through to close? Well, that's a that might be. I mean, in the old world, you just say, no, I'm just going to take whatever the listing broker offers. But in the right. new world, I'd say I can do that for a flat fee for you or I can sure. do that 
And then on the flip side, maybe there's uh, things that you can do to plus what you do for the right. consumer sure. and say, hey, mm -hmm. we're going to offer more services. We're going to like, if I'm a, now I'm, I'm going to list your home, but you're a, you know, you're a person who is maybe downsizing or moving to a retirement home. Hey, we're going to come in and we're going to sell all your stuff. We're, right. we're going to arrange the estate sale. We'll do the do, estate like, sale, right. We'll do right. all those things. And I know there's some agents that do that, but it's not mm -hmm. built into it's a broker widespread. model. No. Yeah. There's, no. So there's a lot of opportunity on the on the on the plus side too to say, hey, can we rethink the way that we deliver services for buyers and sellers? And I, I think well, that's going to be more in the camp of brokers and teams to figure that out. So it's funny you mentioned that because in all the keynotes I do, I mentioned this guy I know named the uh, Crazy Uncle Keith, and I always say this <laughs> lovingly that he's the smartest, laziest human being that I know, and he would Accurate. say he delegates. Yeah. Uh, who would pay a premium? to have somebody handle everything and yeah. did on his last house he purchased to Facts. pack his shit, unpack mm -hmm. his shit. He literally, this guy, like he's not in the room, paid somebody to actually put all the stuff away in the kitchen in an organized fashion no, to no. make sure I, it was designed. I yeah. hired a professional organizer and yeah. it was amazing. Like you just, just, cause I think sometimes stories help concretize things, right? Yeah. So uh, my significant other, she's left-handed and left-handed people are really pissed that the whole world is designed for right-handed folks, <laughs> right? They're mad. And this professional organizer came in and she unpacked every single kitchen box, put it on the counter. And then she looked at Kayla and I and said, uh, okay, who does most of the cooking? And I said, well, I do most of the eating, right? And so that meant Kayla did most of the cooking. And she looked at Kayla and said, are you left or right-handed? And Kayla just immediately fell in love, right? because she's left-handed. She goes, great. You use pans 80% more than you use pots. I'm going to put the pans on the left-hand side. I'll put the pots on the right-hand side. Like that's, Premium service. People yeah. are willing to pay for it. There's a Ritz-Carlton opportunity out there. And somebody who comes up with that, because there's a lot of Americans that have too much money, will pay for that. I think that's like, oh my God, so much yeah. opportunity there. Yeah. Well, and some of the themes in the report tie in together. So for, for instance, AI and the capabilities of it to do things and to automate things or make the transaction easier actually can change the uh, economics in, inside of your brokerage in terms mm. of what you need to do to do transactions, do compliance, do lots of different things that you do today, marketing. And so there's many of those where you can go, look, uh, I, I was just looking at something today where it just it dramatically changed the cost of video production. And I'm like, mm -hmm. oh, well, that's a competitive that's a competitive tool that we're going to use in our business and with our clients because we've just changed the cost of video production dramatically sure. dropped to zero off the end as so, well <laughs> yeah. right. if you can do that that inexpensively then i can actually change some of the economics in my model so some of the themes in the report which i encourage everybody here to go get and read you mm -hmm. can combine those themes we've got a whole bit on teams as well you know this is one where teams are at a new level of both service but also need from the brokerage industry, where many of them have they've they've outgrown what we think of as as a as a traditional small team to where they're now an enterprise. Now they're you know a, 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 an LLC with four or five partners, and they're yeah. multi state now, and they've got a lot going on. So yeah. it, the brokerage industry has some opportunities to serve teams at a higher level as well, uh, given given the changes. So so that's the practitioner. I want yeah. to talk a little bit about industry. Can, can I ask you one more on the practitioner sure. part before we transition? Uh, yeah. Because yeah. I, having a, a world-class consultant on the pod to ask this question is important. I think that the report does a really, really, really powerful job at sort of the 30,000 foot view and maybe down to the 10,000 foot view, right? And uh, as someone who talks to people who are in the business every single day, can you give us just a little bit about the secret sauce of getting from that 10,000 foot view to the conference room? Just, just yeah, before we really, transition to the... That's really good. That's a great question. And as, as, as a professional consultant, I appreciate that question. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's talk about what, what a good He wants 20% not... of whatever yeah. was just sold. So uh -huh. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> now, you don't, I'll, I'll also say you don't have to work with our firm. This sure. is a principle but, of like how should. to work. How to work with a with a consultant resource, or how to how yeah. to go through a consultative process, even if you even if you just do it yourself, That's it's right. like the document informs the background of what yes. you're going to do. So you use that for background, and then what you need to do is do your analysis of your own business and look at your own business. And I always I always say there's some there's some fundamentals, and again we have a process we take people through. It's our it's a uh, a whole we, we call it our our 360 business review, and we look at principally your financials 
your uh, performance in terms of recruiting performance and performance with listings and sales. We look at your operations. We look at your team, your people. We look at your marketing and brand. We look at your technology system. So we look at those areas and we grade everything. And it's really simple. You can do this yourself. You can go through each area in your business and grade it on a scale of one to 10. And anything below a seven, you need to address. You know, mm-hmm. if it's like it's not operating at least a seven to 10. This is just like school. You got to get it up to a passing grade. So you right. got to look at your business and say, where do I have, where do I need a passing grade? So, so you do, you look internally, you grade everything. Then you look externally, do a, do an assessment of your market and say, what are my competitors? Who are my competitors in the market? What are the big market opportunities? What are the trends impacting my market? Right now you're informed internally, you know, what's going on in internally with your business and you know what's going on externally. Now mm-hmm. with that, and then the background of this report, then you go, well, based on that, what are the top two or three things I should make changes to in my business? And right. if you do that pro- if you do that process consistently every year, I, I tell business owners, you should probably should have two to three major projects in your business each year. Mm-hmm. Two to three. No, not five, not ten. Right. Now, all right. that's been steady. You're, if you pick up too many projects, the you people do that do ten that have ten strategic projects. Uh, they've studied this. People that have 10, 10 strategic projects uh, produce the same results as the people that have zero. Right. And those results are bad. It's <laughs> so like so the ideal book? number is like three to five. So you should pick, you say, look, we're going to attack commissions. There's an opportunity right in our market for merger acquisition. And I think we're going to go hard on you know packaging yeah. our, our, buyer, our buyer opportunity, right? Whatever mm-hmm. that is. So you pick three things and then you use that to level up where you were short in your company. And you say, oh, I'm gonna use this opportunity. I'm gonna pick these three things. I'm gonna use these to level up. So that's kind of the way that, that I think. And it's, so it's Love informed it. by what's happening in your market. It's informed by where you are, your strengths and weaknesses as a company and how you rated your, your, yourself internally. And it's informed by the bigger strategic narrative. So that's, that's how I take it to ground level uh, is yeah, to do that exercise. Perfect, thank you. So, that, oh, that, that exercise anyone could do. Uh, yeah. Right. It is. They're going through this process. You look internally, yeah. Yeah. you look at yourself, you look at the market, use and, the, and, the the opportunity report to point you in, in the most opportunistic directions inside your strengths. Yeah. Your competitions, and to weaknesses. reiterate, basically done by the smartest people in the business who are looking at this <laughs> stuff. So like you yeah. got the danger report, right? The opportunity report's going to be right, too. Uh, yeah. And this is associations. MLS's brokerages agents really is where this applies, correct? Across the yeah. board? Yeah, okay. it's, it's across the board. So the, the, yeah. the second section about organized real estate really talks about MLS and association. Now there's some heavy lifting to be done in that area. I'll be candid. The, yeah. uh, I feel like the broker section, the broker and agent, the practitioner section, I'm not going to say is, a, is necessarily light lifting, but it's lifting that is um, less structural, I think. You know, it's not like there, it, it could be depending on how you do your, your it's local a, company. It's a quicker, it's a quicker pivot, right? You, yeah. An individual agent trying to fix their business yeah. can fix their absolutely. business faster than an MLS or an association. Yeah, or something absolutely. Like Cause right. of just the nature of it. So in yeah. organized real estate, we've got a lot of pieces there where again, the leaders we talked to were like, Hey, um, we need to decide what matters to us on clear cooperation. You know, we right. need to decide what's important. Is it, is it the transparency to the consumer? Is it the, you know, the home seller's ability to decide how they want to market? Is it the, you know, is it the, you know, the ability for companies to monopolize on the inventory that they have, right? You so said what, it's so what, much what, more politically correct than I was about to say that. So, <laughs> but this is, is you it, on the show, it, not me. So you're good. Yeah. yeah. The views yeah. being but expressed. What is it that we value, right? What is it? So we need to have that debate. Uh, the uh, very clear signal, again, from the 50 leaders we talked to, separating the MLS, making it a true business data business organization that was very clear like get the association out of mls operations control governance mm-hmm. all that as much as possible right they can still be owners they can still they're all that sort of relationship but get their get get out of that and let mls's run let mls's build a meaningful data business and supply the the things that the industry needs the things that the consumer needs the things that you know the the you know the the, the greater uh, business community needs from the MLS. You know, like those are that's important. So looking at things like that, um, looking at how we govern organized real estate, we've got a pretty strong. We wrote a very strong piece on it in our trends report last year. That continues a theme in here to say, look, we have to look at who's leading these organizations, local, state, and national. 
We have right. to look at how they get into leadership. What are their qualifications? Uh, how does that, you know, when you put together a board of a national organization that has $300 million, $400 million in revenue every year, and state associations that have tens of millions of dollars, right? And some local associations that have, you know, millions, tens of millions of dollars mm -hmm. in news income, like those should be professionally run to the best of our, to put smart people, involve them. Does not all have to be brokers. Doesn't have to all be an agent. Doesn't have to all be, bring in different right. skill sets, bring in different right. perspectives, bring in different leadership thinking. And, uh, and oh, by the way, maybe have less of them overall. Mm -hmm. Maybe we mm -hmm. don't need 600 MLSs and a thousand associations and, you know, all these organizations that kind of serve over, you know, overlapping markets and overlapping functions. Again, none of that, for those that have been tracking the industry, none of that is news. But what we've right. done is build it into like, boom, 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 boom. Here's, here's what we should do. Yeah. You know, here's what needs to happen. There. I feel yeah. like out of that last group, the biggest segment that really has to figure out where the opportunity is, is associations. I really feel like that's going to be the, it's almost like a mix of danger slash how do you pivot for right. this new this new future. Um, I can tell you I've done a couple of presentations at associations and you can you can tell for the first time there's a sense of like we're trying to figure out where we fit in this future, um, uh, which, by the way, is also good because it causes people to, to you're, you have to. You got to grow up at some point, right? So you got to go, all right, so we got to change. It's got new practices have to happen. I mean, um, maybe. Do you have to grow up? Well, you haven't, but, okay. you know. Um, <laughs> well, I, so, I would posit, this is, in, this is in the report. I would posit there's a big enough job. It's so clear that the, uh, that the regulators and the legislatures in most states and in many you know, localities don't understand real estate that well. They just don't. You can tell from the laws that get passed and what regulators are trying to do yeah, things totally. like that. That's a huge job. That's a huge yeah. job that perfectly fits with the mission of an association in terms sure. of advocacy and, and all of that. And we do have, there's a separate section that is for the uh, state agencies themselves that's mm. about, or that, that, you know, create rules for real estate to say like this area that needs a lot of help. And by the way, it will probably, the advocacy is going to come ideally from the state and local associations, maybe from the national association to say like, yeah, we do, should you, stand do, things. do you think that, um, before we, before we wrap up here, cause we, we ought to, everybody just needs to get into the report as well. Yeah. But do you think that there's, I just want to ask this question cause I was, I was, I spoke at Arello as well and in front of the state regulators. So, um, sounds fun. It was actually was, <laughs> it was actually interesting because sure. you can tell that even the state regulators don't actually fully grab grasp like all the things going on in the industry there's a lot of more things are more separated than we realize mm -hmm. but do you think that mm -hmm. that's a opportunity as well that, that the states boy this is gonna be a weird comment but do you think there's more opportunity <laughs> in the states handling a little more oversight of things versus the code of ethics violation just well, as an example th th there there is a strong case to be made that a group of brokers sitting in a room together collaborating on what forms we use is not a good way to conduct business. <laughs> okay. And why? Why? <laughs> so, <laughs> so there's a so, so there is there and, I, and it's the weirdest thing. I'm from Texas. Admittedly, uh, I live in Austin, which is the little blue dot in the middle of a big red state. Mm -hmm. But I will say it's even it's weird for me to say, well, hey, this might be an area where having an intermediary that help that is is bound to the consumer concern <clears throat> principally. Uh, to help work with how business is conducted, might, yeah. they, they provide some liability shield for the industry to say, "Hey, yeah. this is how this is how real estate works in our state," but also could bring in those other perspectives to say, "Look, yeah. this this isn't just you know brokers talking to other brokers about how business should be done," yeah. mm -hmm. which yeah. just looks even if it's not fishy, looks fishy. Looks right? fishy. Yeah. So I, well, I Northwest MLS is a good example of that uh, with with the state of Washington being involved in the whole process. All right, Keith, I know you got one last question to do. take us out. So, so it's I don't know. It's a, I, I didn't look at the page numbers, but it's something like a hundred page document. So I I admit what I'm about to ask you is categorically unfair, uh, but I like asking unfair questions of smart people. Uh, <laughs> Every, all the work you did on it, all the, the synth, synthesizing all of this information and conversations, if you had to say, and, and I, I, admittedly this is unfair, but what's the number one opportunity that you see in the opportunity report of everything that you've looked at? What's the number one thing that you personally see uh, as a key driver for the next, say, 18 to 24 months of residential I, real estate? I think in both 
in both the brokerage agent team context and in the organized real estate context that now is a unique moment to re-engineer some fundamental things, mm -hmm. right? To re-engineer, you know, your, your costs, your, uh, your, your commission, your compensation, your like how your offering. you like, your yeah. offering, like it's a unique yeah. time where that's the thread that I think runs for me, runs through the whole thing to say like, Oh, associations need to think about their value and how they provide it. Brokerages need to think about their value and how they provide it. Agents need to think about their value and how they provide. It. That's the that it runs through the entire report, and I'd say that's the like that's the the one thing. Now it may it may take different forms. It may take different forms. I personally sure. think that most of it, in my mind, is leadership, is related <laughs> to the leadership mm. of your organization and your willingness for that leadership to embrace the change. Yeah. And to use it to grow strategically. The new so, way versus so that, the old way. Because it's a leadership mm -hmm. question. Like yeah. you can only right. engage with that if you have the leadership to say, I'm going to engage with the change in a way that takes advantage of the time that we have, the opportunity we have. So Jack, great, uh, great advice. Thank you for, for being here. Uh they can get the report through the link in our show notes just for clarity. Um and so also, I thank uh, you for the, the, the opportunity report.com. The opportunity. Okay. And we'll have that we'll linked up. We, we appreciate that. Uh, again, thanks for uh, Stefan for ruining my life with my name. And uh, also <laughs> for the, come on, Dwayne, you, it's okay. Okay. <laughs> the hard, the hard work that uh, I know that he was, I know he was uh, doing a lot of this as well behind the scenes. Uh, so a big special thanks to him. And, and I hope the industry listens. So, and he, uh, yeah. there's a, a famous German general who once said, clever and lazy qualifies for the highest leadership posts. So I just want to pin that in before we wrap this up. Jack, thanks again. Thank you all. This is awesome. Thank you so much thanks, for having Jack. me. And I'm uh, glad to talk to you guys anytime. All right. Perfect. Talk to you soon. Thanks for joining us on the podcast. Hit that subscribe button. Trust us. It's the best thing any of us will accomplish today.